ticket. And if someone you know, calls that, his case has to be sent to us for, for investigation. You can see this is quite, quite, quite ridiculous that we, we need to have uh, uh, to, to investigate uh, so, so, so many cases like that. <laughs> so in, in the new constitution, the constitution separates the wrongdoing of state officials into two parts. For those high-ranking and politicians, we still looking at we still look look at the I mean, the take care of them. But for those low ranking official, now if you're familiar with the Thai uh, ranking system, we have now changed that too. But uh, at the equivalent of C seven, you know, C J, C seven downward, then all the cases involve the wrongdoing of these lower ranking official who we submit to a special commission, which is already set up, by the way, within the Ministry of Justice. It's called Public Sector Anti-Corruption Commission. <coughs> but at the moment, this special organization is still not working because the body of commissioners still not realized. You know, it has been in the law book for three years already, but still not operational because the six member of commissioner is still not being realized. So the case is still being undertaken by us at this moment. But what we did is, now the so-called public sector anti-corruption commission, which is already in the system, they have about 200 staff members. We, we, we now ask them to come to work with us, okay, or for us, depending on how you look at it. We just simply deputize them, so to speak. We just deputize them to work in our case. So this case is solved. But when we have the commissioner in the new organization, we can now, the half of our case that we're looking at will be, will be sent to, to them, and we can keep the half of a high ranking and politician, okay? Um, this is a good for our public, general public. In the case when we indict someone, when we indict someone, then we, we, we have an explanation why we indict you, why you ruined something wrong. We explain our decision. But if we drop your case, nobody know why we drop your case. Now the law say we have to give reason why we drop any case. And that has to be made public. The uh, court again, as I said, okay, has done something wrong, I come to someone and someone complained <laughs> to us. We say, oh, he's okay, he had done anything wrong, we drop his case. We have to explain now, according to this, why we drop his case and why we don't prosecute him or indict him. Okay? This is a, a good thing, good result <laughs> from, from uh, Babichon, always very, very uh, adamant about it, that we need to explain why we drop certain cases. Now we do it. According to this law, all right? Number eight. Uh, normally, we can impeach anybody in this country. You, you, let's, let's first say, what, what, if we have done something wrong, who can impeach us? Yes, you can. You can, you can together, about 20,000 of you petition to the Senate, and the Senate will, will send it to this special Supreme Court. And then the Supreme Court will investigate us. And if we, they found that we do certain wrong, they will kick us out of this. That, that was happened to us. But what about others? Other independent and state officials in the whole Thailand, we will have the duty to impeach them. But the starting process has to come from the Senate, particularly from those who are, uh, you know, political, political holders, uh, high ranking officials. You, you submit the petition to the Senate. The Senate will send it to us for investigation. And we we found that uh, someone need to be impeached. We send our decision back to, uh, to the Senate, to, uh, to the, uh, the court, and the court will, will, will uh, decide whether to impeach or not. All right? So the power to impeach is, uh, of course, with us from the beginning. But the new law has expanded the list of people. 
under under our jurisdiction. And that, that I just uh, mentioned to you in, 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 in general order. Uh, who is being included? You can look at section number 58 in the law if you're saying. Okay. Number nine. This is also interesting. Normally, when you have done something wrong, and if you are not caught why under investigation, you can wait until the time period for your guilt wrap over. We call that statute of limitation. Suppose you kill someone. The statute of limitation is 20 years. If you cheat on some project, the statute of limitation for that uh, uh, crime 50 years, and so on so forth, if you have the statute of limitation. If you are being uh, under investigation, uh, under the old law, you can escape the, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the arrest, you know, even you're not, even under the, uh, the investigation uh, period. And you can wait until the statute of limitation finish, then you can attack without uh, being, being harmed. Now you can't. Because the new law says that if you are being investigated, the time when you escape our, our arrest will not count. Uh, again, you back to forget. <laughs> Easy for me. <laughs> he is being complained. We are, we are setting up committee to investigate him. He suddenly disappeared. But he now, our client already. We found out, okay, we want you now, day one. We, we need you to come and answer our, our, our uh, question like this. We, he's nowhere to be found. That time that he disappeared will not be counted toward the statute of limitation in this case. It will go on. 50 years later, he comes back, the case still valid, all right? And this, this is again to, to prevent many cases that they have seen. Uh, in fact, they, one of famous uh, <laughs> politicians uh, uh, in our country, has escaped that even the, the escape the judgment of the, of, of, of the Supreme Court. We, we even include, during the examination period, prosecution period, uh, that, that, that uh, even uh, more important, okay? Number 10. Uh, in, in the old law, if you find someone has done something wrong, suppose you, you found Mr. A official has done something wrong, why he is in office, why he is with the deputy general, uh, and whatever in, in, in his office. The law said you have two years to complain against him with us, two years. If beyond that two years, you don't have a, any legal right to complain anymore, all right? Well, of course, we at the NACC, we still have another section in the law that we can bring the case against that person any, any time like we want. That is the old law. The new law says that the two-year period for anyone to file to file complaint is too short. Let's make that five years. So if you find something, somebody wrong, made something wrong, probably not sure, you have five years now to, uh, to, to complain with us. And for the power that we have, that we can bring the case against anyone that we like to, to find unlimited time, that has been reduced. Now the NCC itself has 10 years. If the case, the wrongdoing, if that person is, has left office for more than 10 years, you can't do anything with them anymore, okay? That is a new law. It's good, I think it's fair. It's fair. Because sometimes, if you leave office for two years, two years is a very short period of time. You may not be able to find some good evidence. But now the theory is it's five years. If you find a good evidence within five years, come to us. And we can show you. See, there's nothing wrong. We'll do it for you. All right? Number 11. What did I talk about? Oh, you I will go faster now because now you, you know the hang of it. Uh, because of so many cases that we now have to take care of, you know, even with, with the, the so-called the separation of the uh, lower case, we should now have about 8,000 cases that we have to investigate. 
at, at high speed here, about 8,000. Certainly, it's too much, too many. Now, you look at many countries in Hong Kong, they only have about less than 100 cases. And they have more than 1,000 members in, in, in the anti-corruption organization. We only have about 700. And we have 8,000 cases compared to about 100 cases in Hong Kong. No way to compare. But anyway, the law, even in, in, uh, during the, the coup, uh, the coup in uh, 2006, the coup leader only gave us the power to send back the case to any uh, audition. Remember the, uh, the, the, the bus conductor who cheated on Hobart ticket? We can send it back to the local police to do it for us now. All right? We have that, that power. And we did. We did send it back <laughs> to, to the local police station in which that bus conductor uh, had committed a, a crime. But now, instead of using the so-called power from the cool leaders, now the parliament has given us the proper section in the new law that we can send the case back. All right? And we'll be doing that with a good conscience. Before that, we did feel nice that we, we are using the so-called the cool leader power, but now uh, that, that, that cool, cool leader power has become properly instituted in, in, in the uh, section, in uh, section 89.2, all right? Uh, uh, this, is, this is, for those you, you might be not interested, normally we, ABCC, will look at state official who commit crime while in his or her official duty. All right? So you, you must be doing your duty incorrectly before you, are, you come under, under uh, investigation from us. But according to this section 123 part slash 1, I mean, the NECC itself can extend the duty, the, the so-called word duty, the, the, the function of duty, to cover more than just more than just uh, the conduct according to the actual law in the law book. If you are familiar with the so-called people code of this country, official will be designated competent officer. In Thai will be Chao Hanakan. In English is competent officer. You have specific legal duty to do this. But or competent officer is part of the larger state officials, which in Thai call Chiaonati Kongra. Okay? Chiaonati sometimes will not come under the investigative jurisdiction of NCC. With this law, it means we can include both in our own uh, uh, jurisdiction. It means we can have a greater power to, to bring in anyone whom we found to be that's doing something wrong. Okay. Number 13. This is the highlight and this is the, the, the first resolution that I mentioned to you earlier. This is the most, to me anyway, the most important new sort of power that exists for us and in fact for this country. In Thailand, according to the legal system, only one person in the whole country, not, not a policeman, but the Supreme Attorney General, who has the power to say he will sue or prosecute the case in court or not. After a court, after he's gone to the process, he said, I will not sue this man, I will not sue this person. For, of course, he has no reason. If he has no reason, we investigate him, all right? <laughs> but now, that power is being extended to us. It means that now, the NECC can use its own judgment according to a specific declaration, you know, the declaration to why we can separate or isolate someone who actually has done something wrong. But he has the knowledge of the wrongdoing in such a way that we can use his knowledge to prosecute somebody else, Peter. 
Suppose we have a director of a department, a corrupt man, grant a project to a contractor in exchange for some bribe, for instance. The contractor didn't want to give the bribe at all, but was forced to do that. If you don't give it to me, you don't get the project. Okay, I don't like it, but I have to give it to you. Now, in the, in the old law, both the giver and the taker will be uh, making the same offense. Okay, both of them are, are guilty. But according to the new law, it means that if the, key, the giver comes to us with a new information that, sir, we, we, we don't like to do this at all, but we are under pressure to do this, with all this information, we can isolate that person under this protection, section 103.2, point six, sorry. He, you will be our witness, key witness in the court. You agree? Okay, under condition this. We will, put, we will not prosecute you under the power we have now here. In the court, you will satan. <laughs> you will blame that big fish. We hope that this can work in two ways. One, we can have a case whereby those who are forced to commit crime or bribery come forward under this protection and we can take on the, the, the bad and corrupt public officials. Secondly, this system of this law who will make a deterrent for those who want to ask for money to have to think twice. That if you ask for money, the, those who will give you the money can come to us and protect it under this law. And you yourself will be in trouble. Okay? So this is the highlight, the most important highlight of this law that I think will change the picture of the corruption in this country in the future. This is my wishful thinking anyway. <laughs> Uh, quickly now, uh, six more. Fourteen. We all we all now have a, a kind of reward for whistleblowers and information here, but no need to, to explain on that. We have never had this in the last ten, eleven years of the system of the old law, but now we, we are drafting the regulation how to give reward to those who give us information that we didn't have in order to. Uh, 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 recoup the money, lose the loss to, to precision or anyone uh, doing his own duty in the job, all right? So we have that. Number 15, the state official who, who had a part in that. Normally, the state official, you cannot accept any money from anyone more than 3,000 baht. That is a, it's a IRL, IRL rule that we have strictly follow. If you are public officials, you, you cannot get any money from anyone except your own salary. If someone gives you the money more than 3,000 baht, you do not report, you will be our clients. Okay? But they ignore that. <laughs> uh, but they are called under, under their, own, their own risk because what we know it, we will not allow. We will get very tough from now on. Anyway, for those of you who, uh, for those of state officials who done work uh, with information and can get uh, someone uh, to to uh, to cough up a lot of money to, to the state, we have a special uh, regulation to to reward them. Promotion, if you know, promotion, special public mention, other accolades that we can give. This this is a new thing, okay? Number sixteen. For those of you who are in the private sector, in, in, the, in the contracting uh, business, number 16 and 17 will give you a, a kind of a, a, a leeway to appreciate this new law. One is that uh, the, the setting up the so-called the public electric prices at the moment is, is, is so, so bad. Normally, what they, what they did is they will set up a very high so that once the project is approved, the, the, the project, the contractor will give the money back, <laughs> keep back, you know, keep back to, uh, to those who are involved in the drafting of the project plan or the proposal. That is bad. That is bad way. Uh, now the 
drafting or the preparation of the, the reference prices will be done in a more open manner by more professional people and need, it will, and need to be under control that other regulation that we are drafting, okay? Thematine is, is a kind of a subsidiary or a corollary of that. That is, for those big projects that have been granted the contract, the, the regulation is being drafted to say that you must maintain an accounting system of your incoming and outgoing, your income and payment. And that special account needs to be filed with the Department of Revenue, who will be given the chance, uh, the, the duty to, to check the accuracy and transparency of that. If you have money that cannot expect that money, you know, to pay right to this person, something suspicious of this nature, and if so, you don't have to li be liable to, to, to question on that. Don't, don't worry, this is, this is the kind of the, the legal power that that give us the, 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 the way in which we can draft regulation to manage the way corruption will take place. Uh, we will make it easier for, for those of you who are state official to submit your so-called asset and debt declaration. At the moment, it's very complex and very, very uh, cumbersome. We will make it easy for you under the, the power that we have. Okay? 19 or two more. Um, again, just like that we have to explain reason for dropping fees. Now, not only that, we have to explain to the public you know, steps and procedures involving investigation of, of the case and allow public to monitor and follow the appropriate of the cases via the use of the next facilities. Suppose you have someone whom you complain to us. We give you a password where you can access our website, our special website, using your password to check how your complaint is being dealt with in real time, okay? Now, we have to do that according to section 103 slash 9. If we don't do that, we can be impeached, okay? <laughs> Finally, this is another big thing. The attempts of the Provincial anti corruption Commission. Now, we will have Eventually, 76 more commissioners throughout e each province in, in this country. But you, you don't see it tomorrow, though. <laughs> we ask for something like at least two years where we can do that. We, we can start with having nine centers throughout the country, and let us say the north, the central, and the northeast, and so on. Nine centers. We have set up already nine. And this nine center will be increased to 15, 34, 50, and eventually we have 76 commission, commissioners to other country in, I don't know when, but uh, as soon as possible. At least at uh, earlier in two year time. What is this provincial uh, anti corruption commission? It's a kind of extension of our central organization, but this provincial commission will not have the same uh, investigative power. It has the, the, the function of, you know, uh, uh, prevention of corruption and so on, uh, public relations, uh, checking off the local official uh, asset declaration and so on. So these are the, uh, the, uh, the situation that we uh, that we could have. So these 20 are the, the salient issues, the main core, I call it to be anyway, there are many more. If you need, you can read the law itself, but I think that should be enough for you already. <laughs> you can see how extensive the, the work that is being cut up for us in the next several years. <laughs> uh, of course, we, we realize all the time that our existence is, 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 is the outcome of political situation. We are set up in this by the coup in 2006. We know who well, okay? Although, even though that now I would say that it being, uh, you can call it sanctified by the constitution or the by special law, we know among our nine members that we can go anytime according to the, the will of the politician. 
it will be a new government uh, in the what, next month, mm -hmm. in July. The new government will come, we don't like you, NACC. We want you to go, they can change the, the law of one section, and then tomorrow we disappear. So that's why we, we do not claim or any, uh, have any, any, any satisfaction with, with this new power at all. In fact, it's a burden on us. But at least we know that now we can do the thing that is good for the country. And we want to do it while we can, while we have the power. <laughs> and if we have to go, so we need somebody else to come and do the job for us. Thank you very much for your attention. I, uh, <clears throat> myself, uh, listen with much interest. I, I think uh, the advent of this new law is the dawn <laughs> of uh, a new era for Thailand. But it, it will take uh, many, many years before we can reach the peak you know, or be clean in the government and official. Um, I am saying this because uh, I did some reading about Singapore's experience. They, they had similar kind of law here. They, they started uh, the Corrupt Practice Investigation Bureau in 1952 with limited power, just like what we have. And then in 1960, they changed the law, similar to what we are doing. And now, 2011, they are very clear, but it's about more than 40, 50 years. But they, I think they, the, the situation became better, you know, after 20, 30 years. So we hope that 20 years from now, we will have clean government. But anyway, the, the, what, what you have uh, told us, the really very extensive uh, 20 point you know, <laughs> that, uh, that you have enumerated, uh, that give us uh, the idea how, how the, new, the old law has uh, been uh, you know, improved on to, to block the, the loopholes. And uh, of course, uh, this will give to a lot of debate. And I'm happy that uh, we have a lot of people here who are very much involved with the issue here. You have uh, Professor Wan Chai, who is uh, our professor. He used to be in the prosecutor at the law office, mm -hmm. and he also at the Ministry of Justice, so uh, you know, all over here. Dr. Divat Mutani, of course, he is uh, our guru in uh, all areas of this field. He knows a lot, has been involved with public life for so long. You know, and the people from IOD, you know, my friends, who are very much uh, interested in corporate governance and their businessmen themselves, who is poor to me, what, and to foreigners, not that we shall also very much involved in, in all this. And we have our students here, you know, IOD students. They are very much involved with in studying, uh, you know, law, social laws, you know, and transnational social uh, problems under Professor Wan Chai. Of course, corruption is one of the things that we have studied. And uh, the International Convention on Anti-Corruption also was adopted. And Professor Wan Chai was very much involved because I was a master in Vienna at the time when he went to the meeting a lot. So all very much related. And uh, now I think it's time for us uh, to, uh, to, to ask, uh, okay. uh, to comment, uh, whatever you do. I see Professor Machai is yeah. there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Professor Machai. I, I have to protest because I have a meeting at 4.30. Uh, uh -huh. I'm taking one hour to go there. So I would like to uh, maybe ask and one question and one comment. The first one is that uh, uh, I would like to ask whether NCAA, NCAA, NCAA. Have, uh, can initiate investigation without any complaint or not, because we have a lot of uh, uh, news. Uh, we have a lot of news, especially for the, uh, from the interior ministry. For example, the cheating in the examination of the sheriff, uh, the, to be a sheriff, which is very vulgar. <laughs> very vulgar and, uh, uh, and many, many things more. With, uh, with an interior ministry, which is uh, very bad for all the, uh, the institution of, of, of the administration, the local administration, and, and, and for the country. Uh, can all need 
LACC started investigation into that already. Uh, that's my first question. The second is my comment on Article 1, 103, uh, 6, or on the uh, non prosecution order. Okay. Uh, from my experience, it's not very effective. Why? Because according to our standard of the interpretation by the Supreme Court, uh, if he is an offender or co-offender, and he make a, a statement against another offender, uh, this this kind of statement will not be very valid because they are the 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 same thing. <laughs> yeah, the same thing. Yeah. The word of 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 uh, uh, those who commit an offense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that 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 they they they, they speak bad thing about the, yeah. Uh, yeah. another one. So uh, the court will not take it as a valid uh, uh, evidence. And it said that if we would like to make him to be a valid witness, yeah. we have to issue a non prosecution order first. Once we issue a non prosecution order, <laughs> he, will not, he will no longer be an offender anymore. Okay. So his statement will be valid. But the bad, uh, the bad thing is that if he changed his mind and refused to give information or refused to be witness in court, so we cannot reverse that, unlike the U.S. So you have to need a conditional pre-bargaining. If you uh, uh, negotiate with the prosecutor and willing to... Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, if they share their mind, the prosecutor can prosecute them right. as a, a by the original charges. But here, you have to have the final order of non-prosecution order before he can be a witness. And this cannot be reversed. So, so we found a lot of cases where some co-offender promises to be a witness. I did do that. Yeah, but <laughs> one, we will issue a non-prosecution order with an irreversible. He's uh, yes, I don't see me. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I'm sorry I didn't bring our own uh, uh, the regulation that we passed yesterday with me. But we discussed this point. And uh, the, what we have agreed yesterday was that it will be similar to the US. That is, the, the, uh, the non prosecution <laughs> is conditional. It means that if you, if you want to agree with that on this condition, it will not will not reverse your, your testimony, okay, then this, the privilege, legal privilege apply. But if you don't, if you don't uh, follow the agreement, the privilege will be revoked. We, we have written that in the regulation. So, so that will prevent uh, the, 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 uh, the case that you have mentioned. I, I don't know whether in the real world we can do that or not, but we have to wait and see. But to answer that, that, that your, your worry about this part, we, we are hopeful in the sense because this is not, not against the so-called the, uh, the, so the, the normal criminal or crime. This is a crime of, of corruption. It means that it's a separate crime from other kind. It means that we want to prevent the bribery more than any other thing. The bribery of, 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 of paying money, kickback, things like that. Then so we think it's easier to, to accumulate or get evidence than, than the, the things that involve the, uh, the other crime, the, the body crime, uh, like killing or uh, murder, and things like that. Uh, on, on, on your first question, the answer is yes. Even in the old law, we have that power to initiate any, any case. But the commissioner, including myself, we are reluctant to do it. You know why? Because we feel that if we initiate a case, any, anybody, we will be blamed that we are finding fault with them. If Mr. A is done something wrong, and if we can raise the cover, you haven't thought we will, we will raise the case against you ourselves. Um, we can do it, yes, according to Section 88. But the way out is easy. Instead of we do ourselves, we can ask somebody else. Now, nah, <laughs> we can have someone who 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 feel the same. Can you please, you know, uh, you know, complain again that person to us? 
possible, you know. Uh, that person, okay, we can do it. Because it's easy to to complain against someone in you know, according to the law. I don't know, since you are you are a lawyer, you can see the in, in the traditional ways. You you cannot complain anyone ex unless you have all full names and everything like that. In our case, you can complain against anyone without having to, to keep information about your name. Provided you have realistic information, true information, that can lead us to get further information. That evidence is good enough for us to set up. In many cases in, in, in our history, we have done a very successful cases based on that. It doesn't have to be someone with real name, anything, but a very detailed information about the wrong ruling. Actually, we, we need that more than, <laughs> than, than the case that we full name. Even with the full name, sometimes we need to get back to you. Why you want to complain? Do you have any further information? If that someone said, no, I just have suspicion, that's why I sent you information. And if we can't find any more information, we drop it. 